Hello, welcome, welcome. So in the previous episode, we started working on this instruction decoder and actually the result was quite nice. This is a lot simpler than a previous attempt at building this. That resulted in me trying my best to simplify the instruction formats as much as possible. I'm sure there's still some simplifications I could do, but I think this is totally sufficient as far as like making it really easy. So on the left, we have something that's recognizing the instruction formats themselves and giving some names to them. Uh, that results in some outputs to denote which fields in the instruction are valid given the, the current format. And then on the right here, we have something that extracts the opcode out of the instruction. So some instructions are directly encoded, like the ones that involve op3, which is really nice. But some instructions, because they have a somewhat large immediate in the instruction, then you end up wanting to do some bit packing. And that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm trying to put some of the opcode bits in the in the fump field. And then here I've put the opcode bits where the extra register would have been because it's not needed for this particular instruction. And then down here, because I want our very large immediate, then the opcode bits have to go right here. So I'm essentially using this bit here to indicate that it's a load store. And then using these four bits to indicate other instructions. And when they're one of these two, then I know the opcode bits are here. So that's what's going on there. So let's continue where we left off and see how far we can get. I'm hoping I can get this all rounded out in this video, but I guess we'll see. Where to start? Um, I think probably this makes the most sense to, to start with. Let's see if we can figure out how to do that. And I think we might have to change the way that I'm um, emitting these valid signals, but let, let's see. So this is probably not the most optimal way of doing it. It's probably better to use a single multiplexer instead of like a tree of multiplexers, but we can go around and optimize things later. First goal is to try and get this working. So in this case, we can select which immediate field we're gonna use. And in this case, we select whether or not we're gonna use the RS value. And now we just need to output the, the registers, I think, and the opcode, and figure out how to emit a knot when it's a system instruction. And I think that's it. We only have four registers for now. Eventually there'll be 16. So I'm just truncating the four bit value in the instruction down to two bits, just temporarily. Trying to look up what the knob would probably be. I believe I said it was going to be in this class. So let's just make it zero of this class. So eight is our knob. And I just want to give it a name. So I think the last thing to figure out is how to handle jump. Branch instructions will always have this opcode prefix. So I suppose we could just emit whether or not 
this opcode prefix has been detected. So I think this will work if the first bit, which is bit two, is zero. Oh no, I misremembered. It is the second bit that needs to be one, and then the third and fourth bit are zero. Okay, that's an easy fix. Okay, I think what's left is just to clean this up. I want to preserve the order of the outputs and the inputs, so I'm just dragging the old ones to where the new ones are in this so that I don't have to change the order when I'm done. Um, I guess you could debate which one's faster, but anyway, I'm just going to do it this way. All right, enough juggling things around. I think I'm happy enough. Let's see if this works. Well, it turns on. That's a good sign. Let's uh, just clean up the mess over here because it looks like you can't have duplicate uh, entries in your list, which is a little annoying, but uh, eh, easily worked around.
So let's see. Um, if this bit is selected, then this should be a load store instruction. So we should get on the right hand side here the m5 value. So, and then we've got a register that we're selecting. So it'll be m5, and then we've got these two bits for the register. Yep. So we get three, one. Yep. That looks working. And then these four bits should be the destination register, but only the first two should do anything. So that should make destination one. Yep. Yep. That looks to be working. Okay. So that's this instruction working. Uh, I wonder if we should set up some test cases for these. That might be nice. That way we know that these things are working. Okay, so this is how you would set up like a unit test for a part of the code. And you've got the ability to specify which inputs and outputs in the first line. And then each line after it is just like a space separated CSV. There's some more advanced things that I covered in previous episodes, but this would be the very basics that you can do. So I'm just going to do a bunch of test cases and just speed through that. Okay, I think this is good enough. I can add more test cases kind of offline, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm going for. I'm just testing each of the different formats, and for the sake of space, I just combined both of the M11 formats, and I didn't test all of the signals. I might add more 
like RS valid and RD valid to each of the test cases, but I can do that off camera. So I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So if you have any comments or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.